Hello friends, good morning. In today's video lecture, I will take few more numericals on traveling waves. The first numerical is two overhead transmission lines of surge impedance 400 ohms each have a 2 km length of underground cable of surge impedance 60 ohms between them. The velocity of wave propagation in cable is 2 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Compute the value of transmission and reflection coefficient at each junction. This is first part. Second part is plot the voltage at first junction and at midpoint of the cable against time up to 40 microseconds. Assume surge of 500 kV travels along the first line towards the first junction. Neglect the reflection from the remote end of the line. So in this numerical, there are two lines having surge impedance of Z1 and Z3 say both are equal that is 400 ohms and they are connected by a cable having surge impedance of 60 ohms. Velocity of propagation in cable is 2 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second and length of the cable is 2 kilometers. This length is 2 kilometers. The voltage entering the first junction from the first line is 500 kV. In the first part, we have to compute the transmission and reflection coefficient at both the junctions. So at this junction, if you consider transmission coefficient or in general, the equation for transmission coefficient is 2 times Zt divided by Zt plus Zn and reflection coefficient we denote by gamma suffix R. It is Zt minus Zn upon Zt plus Zn. So first we compute the transmission and reflection coefficient at this function first junction. Transmission coefficient bit from 1 to 2. This indicates we are computing transmission coefficient from line 1 to line 2 that is cable. So it will be 2 times Z2 divided by Z2 plus Z1. So after substituting the values we get this as 0 0.260 then reflection coefficient from 1 to 2. So it is Z2 minus Z1 upon Z2 plus Z1. It is minus 0 0.7391. Then reverse. If wave comes from cable and enters line after reflection from this junction, obviously the wave will come in this direction. At this point, there is change in the impedance. So part of this will be reflected and part of this will be transmitted. But at this time, we have to compute the transmission and reflection coefficient from second to one, that is two to one. So we denote this by transmission coefficient two to one. So formula for this will be two times Z1 upon Z1 plus Z2. After substitution, we get the value 1.739. Similarly, reflection coefficient from two to one, it is Z1 minus Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2, it is 0 0.739. Then wave, voltage wave when comes in this cable and at this point it enters. Again, there is change in impedance. So part of this will be transmitted and part of this will be reflected. So it is from 2 to 3. So we denote transmission coefficient from 2 to 3. So formula is 2 times Z3 upon Z2 plus Z3. This is the value obtained. Then reflection coefficient from 2 to 3, it is Z3 minus Z2 upon Z2 plus Z3. This is the value obtained. So that is the first part. <coughs> we have computed transmission and reflection coefficient at both the junctions. Here, considering we are entering from 1 to 2 as well as from 2 to 1. We are neglecting or we are neglecting the reflection at this termination. Therefore, we are not computing the coefficient from 3 to 2. Now second part of the numerical is plot the voltage at first junction and at midpoint of the cable against time up to 40 microseconds. Assume surge of 500 kV travels along the first line towards the first junction. Neglect the ne reflection from the remote end of the line. So first we have to compute how much time will be required by the voltage to travel a distance in cable. Length of the cable is given that is 2 meters, uh, sorry 2 kilometers 
and velocity of propagation in the cable is given that is 2 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So convert this length into meters divided by velocity so 2 into 10 to the power 8. So time required to travel the distance that is entire length of cable is 10 microseconds. We have to compute the values of voltage at this junction and at midpoint of the cable up to 40 microseconds. So here let us say when voltage enters this junction comes at this junction that is time t is equal to 0. This is the voltage V. So here it will be transmitted as well as it is reflected. So let us say V double dash is the transmitted voltage that is equal to V1. So it, re it will require 10 microseconds to come up to this end. So this time is T is equal to 10 microseconds. Now here again there is change in impedance. So a part of this will be reflected, sorry transmitted and part of this will be reflected. So it is V1. So V1 double dash and it is V1 dash. Let us say it is V2. Now when V2 starts from here, again it will take 10 microseconds to reach at this point. So this time is T is equal to twice T that is 20 microseconds. So this voltage is V2 double dash. This reflected voltage is V2 dash that we denote by V3 let us say. So again time required for V3 to reach to this point will be 10 microseconds. So this is time T is equal to 3T that is 30 microseconds. This is transmitted voltage V3 double dash. This is reflected voltage V3 dash. Let us say it is V4. Again it will require 10 microseconds to reach at this point. So this time is T is equal to 4T that is 40 microseconds. So this is voltage V4. So transmitted is V4 double dash and reflected is V4 dash. So now we require to compute all these voltages. So first we compute V double dash. V double dash is transmitted voltage. So it will be equal to incident voltage multipli multiplied by transmission coefficient from 1 to 2. So transmission coefficient from 1 to 2 multiplied by V that is equal to V double dash that is nothing but V1. So we, we are getting this as 130 kV. Then V1 double dash this is the transmitted voltage and V dash V1 dash is the reflected voltage that is V2. So V1 dash is V2 reflection coefficient from 2 to 3 into V1 it is 96 kV. V1 double dash that is transmission from 2 to 3 multiplied by incoming voltage V1 so that is 226 kV. Now V2 double dash this is V2 double dash that is transmitted voltage from 2 to 1 and this is reflected voltage V3 or V2, V2 dash from 3 to 2. So these voltages are also computed by substituting the values. Similarly we compute other voltages. So after computing the voltage we prepare a table as per Bevelis lattice diagram. Here we are taking T 0 microsecond 10, 20, 30 and 40. This is voltage Vx that is at the junction of line 1 and cable this is Vx and at midpoint this voltage we denote by Vy. So here we plot we, we write Vy here we write Vx. Now let us compute the values. Now as per Bevelius lattice diagram we draw the vertical line from the point where we have to compute the voltage and horizontal line from T. So first T is equal to 0. So this is T is equal to 0 line. This is line from point X. So at this point above this there is no voltage. So at T is equal to 0 voltage at this junction is 0 that is Vx is 0. At this point also it is 0 because this is the intersection point and no voltage is available above this point. So it is 0. After 10 microsecond draw the line horizontal line vertical line it is intersection point so above this if we observe this is the transmitted voltage that is the resultant voltage v double dash and above this at point y same voltage is there so at time t is equal to 10 microseconds voltage at x and y will be same that is v1 so here v1 we write that is 130 kv then at 
20 microsecond the the horizontal line it is intersecting point x at this point above this if we observe only this voltage is available that is v1 and at midpoint if we find above this point it is v2 plus v1 so at time t is equal to 10 microseconds it is again it is v1 and here it is v1 plus v2 that is 226 kb then at 30 microsecond draw the horizontal line from here vertical line so above this point voltages are this is the resultant voltage that is v2 double dash and this is the resultant voltage that is v double dash so at point x it will be v double dash plus v2 double dash we can see here it is v1 that is v double dash plus v2 double dash that is 297 kv and at this time at point y that is midpoint above this it is v3 plus v2 plus v1 so voltage is v2 plus v1 plus v3 that is 297 kv now last is t is equal to 40 microsecond this is the horizontal line it is intersecting point x here so above this if we observe this is the resultant voltage this is the resultant voltage so only v1 and v2 double dash will be there so that is same as 297 kv at midpoint if we observe at this junction it is v4 plus v3 plus v2 plus v1 so here it is v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 that is 350 kv so this is in tabular form then we have to draw the Bevelis lattice diagram so we take time along x axis and voltage along y axis time 0 10 20 30 and 40 microseconds so at 0 voltage is 0 at 10 it is 130 at 20 it is again 130 at 30 it is 297 so we are going to 297 at 40 it remains 297 then we join this by straight lines so it is the ladder diagram of the voltage distribution with respect to time at this junction now same thing we have to repeat at this at the midpoint of the cable so 0 10 20 30 and 40 microsecond time voltages are 130 226 297 and 350 kv respectively so we mark the voltages at at the at corresponding times and join by straight lines so this is the bevelis letters lattice diagram at midpoint of the cable so this is how we are computing the reflection and transmission coefficients at junctions when wave enters from medium 1 to 2 and vice versa 2 to 3 and vice versa and this is how we calculate the voltage at different times at different points on the same line we can compute the voltage distribution with respect to time at this junction also so one thing you have to remember when we are finding the voltage at the junctions we have to consider the transmitted voltage that is the resultant voltage next problem next numerical next numerical is a long tail such voltage of 500 kb magnitude on an overhead transmission line of surge impedance 400 ohms arrives at a point where the line continues into a cable 1 km long having total inductance of 265 microhenries and total capacitance of 0.165 microfarad at the end of cable a transformer is connected having surge impedance of 1000 ohms find the surge voltage distribution 12 microseconds after the surge arrives at the line cable junction so this is the diagram it is the line terminated into cable and at the end of the cable a transformer is connected surge impedance of the line z1 is given 400 ohms cable length is 1 kilometer for cable inductance is given 265 microhenries capacitance is given 0.165 microfarads so cable length is 1 kilometer so we can say that it is 265 microhenries per kilometer it is 0.165 microfarads per kilometer and if this length had been 2 kilometers then we have to divide this by 2 this by 2 in order to get the inductance and capacitance in per kilometer now the surge impedance of the line of the 
केबल इज गिवन बाय फॉर्मूला अंडरवुड एल बाय सी सो सब्सटीट्यूट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एल एंड सी वी गेट सर्ज इम्पीडेंस ऑफ द केबल इज फोर्टी ओम्स सर्ज इम्पीडेंस ऑफ द ट्रांसफार्मर इज गिवन वन थाउजेंड ओम्स नाउ सर्ज इम्पीडेंसेस ऑफ लाइन केबल एंड एंड दिस ट्रांसफार्मर आर नोन नाउ लेट अस कम टू द वोल्टेज वेव नाउ वेलोसिटी ऑफ प्रोपोगेशन इन द केबल इज वन अपॉन इन एनी मीडियम इज इन जनरल वन अपॉन अंडरवुड एल सी so substitute the values for l and c to get the velocity of propagation in the cable so it is coming 0.151 into 10 to the power 6 kilometers per second now distance covered in 12 microsecond we have to compute this voltage distribution after 12 microseconds so this is the velocity in kilometers per second so in 12 microsecond the distance covered will be 12 multiplied by this velocity in kilometers per second that is 1.8 kilometers now length of the cable is 1 kilometer so at t is equal to 0 the voltage will enter this point so from here it will be trans reflected and it will be transmitted if it is voltage v this is v double dash now it will come at this point v2 and after coming at this point part of this will be transmitted part of this will be reflected now time required to travel the distance in cable is so sorry the distance covered in 12 microsecond is 1.8 kilometers so this is 1 kilometer so in 12 microsecond it is traveling 1.8 kilometers so it has covered 1 km and after reflection it will cover remaining 0.8 km so up to this point in the cable from this point up to this point voltage will be v2 plus v2 dash whereas in this part of the cable voltage will be only v2 so first we find v2 that is transmitted voltage it is 2z2 upon z1 plus z2 so it is 91 kv now when voltage reaches at this point there is reflection so we have to find the reflected voltage v2 dash so formula is z3 minus z2 upon z2 plus z3 into v2 that is the incoming voltage so we are getting this as 84 kv so in first point 2 kilometers of the cable length surge voltage will be only 91 kv whereas in remaining 8 100 meters it will be v2 plus v2 dash that is 84 plus 91 that is 175 kv so this is how we computed the surge voltage distribution in the cable after one point uh, after 12 microseconds next numerical is a three phase overhead transmission line has conductors 1.5 cm diameter spaced 1 meter in equilateral formation the resistance and leakage are neglected that is r and conductance they are neglected compute first part value of terminating resistance for no reflection second part the line current if a voltage wave of 11 kv traverses along the line and third part rate of energy absorption and rate of energy reflection if the line is terminated into star connected load of 1000 ohms per phase so in the first part we have to find first the value of terminating resistance for no reflection for no reflection the surge impedance and terminating impedance they should be identical they, they should be same so first we have to find how much is the surge impedance of the line in this numerical l and c that is formula we have formula for surge impedance Zn is equal to underwood L by C. L and C values are not directly given. The diameter of the conductor and their spacing in the formation of the line they are given. Diameter is 1.5 centimeter and spacing is 1 meter in equilateral formation. So this is the spacing. Now when this type of spacing is there, then inductance formula is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln. d equivalent upon r so many henrys per meter so substitute the values so 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln equivalent 
this is equivalent spacing is 1 meter divided by this is diameter so divided by 2 that will be radius multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 because we have to convert this centimeter into meters so we get 9.78 into 10 to the power minus 7 henrys per meter is the inductance formula for capacitance is c is equal to twice pi epsilon divided by ln d equivalent upon r so twice pi epsilon is 10 to the power minus 9 divided by 36 pi complete divided by ln 1 that is equilateral spacing of 1 meter divided by 1.5 that is diameter divided by 2 so this will get radius multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 because this is in centimeter so c we are getting 1.136 into 10 to the power minus 11 farads per meter so zn is square root of l by c that is 294 ohms now for no reflection terminating impedance the zt should be equal to zn so zt is equal to zn gives zt should be equal to 294 ohms next part is the line current you have to find the line current if voltage wave of 11 kV travels along the line so this is the voltage wave divided by surge impedance of the line so voltage is line voltage divided by root 3 that is phase voltage divided by impedance so line current is 21.6 amperes third part is the rate of energy absorption and rate of energy reflection if the line is terminated into star connected load of 1000 ohms per phase so for this we have to compute the reflected as well as transmitted voltage as well as current now line is terminated into 1000 ohms per phase impedance surge impedance is 294 ohms so v double dash that is transmitted voltage given by equation twice zt upon zn plus zt will give here voltage we have to take in phase value so it is 11 by root 3 so we are getting this 9.8 kV. V dash reflected voltage is Zt minus Zn upon Zt plus Zn into V that is phase value. So 11 by root 3 substitute the values. So we are getting this is 3.46 kV. Now for current the transmitted current is twice Zn upon Zn plus Zt into I. I is 21.6 ampere. So we are getting 9.81 amperes. Similarly we can compute the reflected current that is Zn minus Zt upon Zn plus Zt into I. So we are getting this minus 11.8 amperes. Now rate of energy absorption that is energy absorbed in the load. So it will be it is three phase load. So three times phase voltage that is transmitted phase voltage multiplied by transmitted current because it is going into the load. So it is coming 288.4 kilobat. Now rate of energy transmission. So it is three times because it is three phase load multiplied by reflected voltage multiplied by reflected current. So reflected current was in my with minus sign. So rate of energy will also be with minus sign that is 122 kilowatt with negative sign. So that is all about the numericals on traveling waves. I have taken different types of numericals and try to explain each and every numerical. Friends, if you feel this video lecture useful, then please like it, subscribe to my channel, ask your friends, colleagues and juniors to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system production. If you want to make effective and efficient use of time, then read my book on time management. The link for the book is given in the description box. I have launched a useful course for the students on Udemy. The title of the course is Boost Your Learning and Become Top Achiever. The link for the book is also given in the description box. The course is very useful for the students who are preparing for competitive as well as entrance exams. Thank you.